So you've been talking a lot lately about digital transformation, but help me and help like my dad, who's worked in, who ran a manufacturing company his whole life, understand what that really means. What it means, it truly means that every company in the planet is becoming more of a digital business. What is it? Well, let's take a couple of examples, maybe, to make it very concrete. Buller is a Swiss uh, company, which is one of the leading food processing companies. What they do, they basically process and sell grains, uh, corn as an example, and with the new technologies like AI, like cloud, and analytics, and what you call the vision cognitive services, they analyze the grains, the corn, and they can actually sort out the bad grains, which, are, which contain toxins, pretty bad for people, from the good ones. And with that, they've got an incredible quality accuracy rate, saving potentially a lot of lives. So that's the way they work today. In the past, it was more obviously a much more manual process with a lot of mistakes being done, and obviously with a health issue at the end of the process. You know, you go to other industries like stuffing, which is about finding jobs for people. Adeco, one of the leading companies in the world for staffing, we've been partnering with them to build some technology on the cloud to analyze your skills, Sarah, maybe, as you look to new opportunities and connect you with the most relevant training online so that you can expand, extend your capabilities, which have many, to aspire to do something else tomorrow. Etc. So those are examples among many where you see industry by industry, technology enabling those companies to do more so that people can achieve more as well. And are you working with the companies to build the technology? Is it custom in each case when you're building corn or matching people with jobs? No, that's a great question. So, you know, what we do is really we build a foundation, which is really that cloud platform with a lot of the building blocks of technology. And then what happens is we partner with those companies. We partner as an example, another example in retail, Kroger, pretty big retailer. Uh, and what we do with Kroger, we co-build some technology to enable a scenario like store as a service. Store as a service is you come in the store, you do your shopping, you don't have to pay because the store knows you, Sarah, you know exactly what you want, what you love, and you get out without any friction. We co-build that on top of our Azure cloud with all of our data platform capabilities. But that IP, that actual capability is Kroger's. And then with Kroger, we can actually even help them to resell that to other retailers in the world. So that creates a real ecosystem across an industry. And are you building that with Kroger so that you yes. can walk into the grocery store and just yes, walk out are, with your groceries? Yeah, yeah, we're building with Kroger right now. And I've also heard another buzzword from Microsoft a lot lately, tech intensity, which I need you to help me understand. Yeah, tech intensity is, is all about a couple of things. Number one, you can find today some great world-class technology when it comes to cloud, to AI, what you call computing at the edge, uh, big data, etc. Microsoft is one of those leading providers of mm -hmm. technologies. And of course, you could, you could say, well, I'm just going to buy that and I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be a digital business. That is not tech intensity. This is a starting point. Then you need to make a decision as a company. What and how much do I need to build by myself custom solution services on top of that world-class technology to become that top-class retailer, to become that top-class automotive company? And so this is where we partner with companies to help them co-build digital capacity with scaling of their teams to do that and to drive usage because the cloud world is all about services and services is the way you use products. Services is the way you do a task and activity. This is the way you connect a car. The great example, we've announced a partnership with Volkswagen, a very large automotive company in the world, and they are building a core R&D center in Redmond, close to headquarters, actually there, <laughs> to co-build a connected vehicle platform to connect all their cars in the future. That's tech intensity, where we partner together, they're using the building blocks in an open platform, Azure, and then they drive the usage of the services of the cars for their, cons for their customers globally. Can any company not be a tech company? And what are like, some of the surprising places where you're seeing really 
high-end technology where there wasn't before? Well, you know, every business uh, has more than to ask themselves the questions what tech means to me. Actually, they are driving the change now. I was meeting with many CEOs this week in Davos, many more to come still. And all the CEOs not just talk about the buzzword, digital transformation, they are driving it. But it's also very emotional, by the way, because it's about changing the way you work. And we see incredible high-tech innovation, uh, back to your question, in a number of industries. Retail is moving very fast now because of so a very big competition happening with Amazon, to be very clear. Uh, we see also financial services. Financial services want to really find a way they serve their customers, not just as a payment service company, but maybe helping in your life to do things you know, in a much more efficient way. And you go on and on and you see other, other businesses like obviously automotive company because automotive company is no more about building a car with some tech inside, it's about mobility as a service, which could be a fleet of car, maybe auto fully automated with autonomous driving, which could be biking as well with a, you know, AI enabled bikes, all the way to be the more efficient, the more clean energy, efficient as well in the city tomorrow. That is really where we see a lot of innovation happening. So many of the discussions at Davos this week seem to be focused around some of the moral conundrums of the future of technology. Can you tell me what some of the things that you're worried about? Well, I think when, when, when we have such great capabilities on our hands, I mean, as a, as, as a leading tech company, we have a huge responsibility as well. And, and we see it every single day, not only when we work with enterprise to help them change the skill of their people. And I'm not just talking about tech skills, which is key, I'm talking about reskilling actually people on the manufacturing floor. So we are doing some partnership works with some companies that have to assist their people on the, fly, on the line of production. ZF, as an example, is a great example of that. ZF is a huge manufacturing company in mm -hmm. Germany. And we have actually put together with our mixed reality HoloLens a process where we remotely, they remotely assist their technicians and they train them on the fly to actually adjust and fix some of the issues in the production chain. That's about augmenting people's capabilities. And then you go beyond the enterprise. And I was super happy to participate on behalf of Microsoft to this uh, global alliance for youth with Nestle and others, where we are reaching out hundreds of thousands, millions of kids, of girls, of underserved as well communities to truly better master some digital skills, demystify AI in all those big worlds, mm -hmm. so that it can really augment their own human capabilities to do more in this digital society. And what are those skills that they need? You know, the skill they need is actually more and more very human skills, like collaboration skills, communication skills, emotions, uh, the way you are doing great job problem solving, the way you work as a team seamlessly, as opposed to, hey, I'm driving it. No, we are going to do and solve problems together. And you do that and you enable the people to understand how they can master some of those digital services in their hands, on the phone, on a on, you know, on mixed reality device, whatever it is, they can do wonders. And we see also great potential connecting the youth coming into the workforce with actually more experienced workers. And I was talking to some of the largest companies like uh, Bayer, Takeda, where they're actually pairing more experienced people, senior people, let's call it them way, and the Z generation coming to work. And you've got this beautiful reverse mentoring between the young teaching digital to the more experienced and the more experienced teaching the job, the business to the others. And I think it's a great combo for the future.